Hey there, folks. At long last, the sender of the letters from a friend is about to be revealed. Who is our mystery correspondent? Sometimes people ask me how sure I am about the theories that I present in my videos, and the answer is it varies from mystery to mystery. And guess what? Of all the solutions I have ever presented to you for the various mysteries Bethesda leaves for us in their games thus far, I am the most sure of this one. To give you a figure, I'd say I'm about 99% sure that I know who sends the letters from a friend. And I am very surprised that in 11 years no one has come up with this theory. I've come across a few fan theories that have some of the right ideas, but no one has exactly what I'm about to present to you. The person in question, who I'm more than fairly certain is the sender of these letters, has managed to remain elusive since Skyrim's debut. And there is one key reason for that, which I will provide a hint for. Go to my channel's page and click on the Videos tab. You may find this key reason there. And while you're there, you should check out the new membership options I've set up for the channel. So in this video, I'm going to present five theories to you. They're not necessarily the five best theories that are out there. I picked two that are common enough that I think we need to address them. One that I came up with that likely isn't true, but I figured is unique enough that I want to share it with you. One from another YouTuber that's really a great theory, but that I don't think works quite as well as the last theory that I'm going to present to you. The one that I'm 99% sure is our answer. Before we dive in, let's cover a few details about these letters from a friend. Upon completing Dragon Rising, it becomes possible for couriers to bring you letters that are titled Letter from a Friend. The couriers will say that the person who gives them the letters is male. However, we are not going to take that seriously because of the possibility of a middleman. Which would make sense because it's well established that the sender wants to remain anonymous. I wouldn't be doing this video if it wasn't. The way I see it, if the sender really wants to be hard to track down, then using a middleman makes a lot of sense. The letters are triggered by using the foom in places where people can hear you, and they say the following. Dragonborn, you caused a bit of a stir in location when you demonstrated the power of your foom. Not everyone is anxious for the return of the Dragonborn. I, for one, desire to see you grow and develop your talents. Skyrim needs a true hero these days. You should turn your attention to location. I understand it holds a mysterious source of power that can only be unlocked by the Dragonborn. Sincerely, a friend. Reading one of these letters will trigger a miscellaneous objective that will mark a word wall somewhere in Skyrim. So first, the sender must have the means to write and send these letters and a way of knowing where the word walls are. Second, they must have a motive for helping the Dragonborn find them. And lastly, they must have a reason for remaining anonymous. Let's start with Delphine, one of the more common if not the most common theory. It goes without saying that she has a clear interest in the Dragonborn becoming more powerful, so that they can slay lots of dragons. Also, she is very knowledgeable about ancient Nordic ruins, so she may very well have some old books or a contact like Faringar that's providing her with locations of word walls. Lastly, the best reason to believe that Delphine sends the letters from a friend is that she signs the mysterious note that she leaves in Ustengrav a friend. Clearly, Bethesda wants us to suspect Delphine. However, there is a big issue with it being her. Why the anonymity? It makes sense prior to slaying Salokaneer at Kynesgrove, but why keep it up after she and the Dragonborn become allies? I mean, why even send letters at that point when she can just tell them where to go face to face? Furthermore, if we examine these signatures, what we see is that they're not quite the same. Delphine signs a friend with a lowercase f, and the sender we're looking for uses a capital F. And there are some other slight differences as well. Of course, these are small differences, but think about how a real detective would go about determining if the same person wrote two different letters in real life. They would look for small nuances just like this. So I think that Bethesda is sort of testing us here. We have to actually think about how this is done in real life to interpret this clue correctly. Also, while Delphine does have the means to be the sender, some of the other suspects I'm going to present to you have better means. Next up, maybe it's the dragons that we encounter atop the throat of the world upon completion of the main quest. Odaving tells us that some of the dragons have been questioning the supremacy of Alduin, and he aids the dragonborn in challenging Alduin because he wants to see whose boom is the strongest. So perhaps this faction of dragons is sending the letters from a friend because they want to prepare the dragonborn for this battle with Alduin. Since they're dragons, I feel comfortable assuming that they can sense the words of power or that they simply remember where they are. Also, in this case, the anonymity would make some sense because if the Dragonborn knew that the letters were coming from dragons, then they probably wouldn't trust them. He or she would likely think that they were being set up for some sort of trap. 
This is all decent reasoning, however there is a glaring issue if this candidate's means to send the letters, they're dragons. So one, how could they write the letters, and two, if one of them were to swoop down and say to the courier, hey can you deliver this for me, he'd run for his life. There is a way around this though, they could somehow be proctoring the letters through the Greybeards. This is an okay theory, but I have some much better ones for you. Speaking of the Greybeards, perhaps they are sending the letters from a friend. More specifically, maybe Bori, Wolfgar, and Einar are sending them because Ney cannot simply tell the Dragonborn about the words of power since Ney cannot speak. Arngir tells us that most of the Greybeards don't speak because studying the way of the voice has made their voices too powerful for normal conversation. Hence, maybe they send the letters because it's the simplest way for them to communicate with the Dragonborn. While I'm on this subject, I want to make a side note that could come back in future videos. One thing that way too many fans overlook about the Ebony Warrior and Ulfric Stormcloak is that they both can speak. Back to the Greybeards, perhaps their motive is simply for the Dragonborn to further their understanding of the Way of the Voice. Also, we know that they can sense word walls. However, with this one we once again have the anonymity issue. Why not sign their names or just write from the Greybeards? So this is a decent theory, but the next two are far better. The credit for this next one all goes to Camel from Camelworks. In Camel's video on this subject, his final guess was that Hermea's Mora sends the letters because he wants to prepare the Dragonborn to face Mirak. Instead of going into detail for this one, I'm just going to card his video in the top right. Camel presented a great theory, and I think he had a lot of the right ideas, but I don't think that he is correct. I think that this next one I have for you just fits a bit better than that does. So now it's time for the big reveal. Please allow me to explain why I believe that the sender of the letters from a friend is none other than Karita. Yes, indeed, I'm 99% sure that Karita is our anonymous sender. So some of you might be thinking, who's Karita? Well, there are actually two characters in Skyrim named Karita, and this one is a pilgrim that the player has a chance to meet while walking up the 7,000 steps during the Way of the Voice. But once the player reaches High Hrufgar, she vanishes from the game. So hold on a second here, Bethesda made Karita and recorded lines for her, and based on the peculiar items in her inventory, they clearly put some thought into this character. Yet, they took her out of the game. This is all an awful lot of trouble to go to for a character that most players will just walk right by and never see again. Why go to this much trouble to develop a character, then take her out of the game after only giving the player one opportunity to interact with her? After all, it's not like she serves a functional purpose in the way of the voice, yet she's tied to that quest for some reason. Well, perhaps there is hidden meaning here. If one does choose to talk to her on their way up the mountain, she will be very tight-lipped. Particularly about her identity. Very much like the anonymous sender we are looking for. Also, her very existence in the game is contingent upon a flagging sequence during the main questline, yet she manages to slip right under the radar. So she's involved with the main questline, yet almost always goes unseen, both things we can also say about the sender. So yes, I believe that Karita is the person that sends the letters from a friend and Bethesda made her disappear after the way of the voice as a subtle way of drawing attention to her. But how does she know where the words of power are, and why does she want the Dragonborn to find them? Remember the clue I gave you in the introduction? I said to look at the videos tab on my channel's page. Well, you may have noticed that the term secret identity comes up in a few of the titles. Yes, oh yes, Karita has a secret identity, so who is this really? Elder Scrolls fans, I introduce you to the goddess Kine. Yes, that's right, this mystery woman is none other than Kine aka Kinnereth, the goddess of nature and wife of Lorcan. So I have some explaining to do. How do I know that this is Kine? Well, as you might imagine, Bethesda left us some clues. Let's start with the obvious, Karita starts with K, like Kine. And where is she? The throat of the world, Kinnereth's sacred mountain. Not only is she on this mountain, she's in front of the fourth emblem. The only one that references Kine by name. And in the first word, no less. I did come across some conflicting information about this. One source seems to suggest that she can be in front of other emblems as well, but I've tested this very thoroughly, and I've only ever seen her appear in front of this one. So what does Karita mean? Well, in Latin, it means beloved. Which makes some sense, because Kine is Lorcan's beloved. However, there's more to be said here. 
The last dragonborn the person that we play as is commonly thought to be what's called a Shezarine, which is a mortal reincarnation of Lorcan. So she's also sort of our beloved, and I think that's exactly why she's here. She's waiting for the player, for us. Dragonborns are often Shezarines. So when she heard the Greybeard summon the last dragonborn, she made her way up the mountain to wait for our arrival because she wanted to find out if her husband had been reincarnated again. Which Bethesda also hinted at by placing the Arcturian Heresy and Five Songs of King Wolfarf in her inventory. According to Michael Kirkbride, a few characters that are featured in these texts were avatars of Lorcan. The characters in question are King Wolfarf, the mortal Talos, and Zurin Arctis. Also, both texts refer to Kine by name. It is curious that she carries the Arcturian Heresy because this text generally depicts Talos in a negative light, yet she also wears an amulet of Talos. But I'm not reading into this because there are multiple ways to interpret this. Carrying the book doesn't mean that she believes what's in it, also could be that the amulet is just part of the Pilgrim Act. So I think it would be a mistake to read into her feelings about Talos based on this. Because Karita's inventory on its own just isn't enough for us to arrive at any sort of informed conclusion about that. I think that Bethesda is just using these two books to hint that she has an interest in things pertaining to Lorcan, such as Shezarines. Why? Because she is kind. It's quite possible that she has aided lots of Shezarines throughout the thousands of years that she's spent in Mundus. Let's backtrack a bit because there's also another definition of Karita that we should talk about. In some Southern Asian languages, including Pali and Sanskrit, Karita can mean a few things pertaining to causation. Here are some definitions that I've come across. Brought about, build, induced by, construct, caused to do, forced to be done, etc. So how is this relevant? Well, Kine was one of the original spirits that took part in the creation of Mundus. In fact, some sources claim that she played a key role in those events by providing the space. So it's very fitting that Bethesda would name Kine's alter ego Karita since that name's meaning pertains to Kine's history. It also could support our notion that she has directly intervened in events in order to aid Shezarines throughout their existence. I mean, maybe part of the idea with the books is that she intervened in some of these events. There's one more item in her inventory that we must discuss. She wears a gold and emerald circlet. I came across one source that claims it can actually be any circlet, but I've tested this thoroughly and I've only ever seen her in this one. So right off the bat, this draws attention to her. Those of you that are familiar with Karita probably remember the circlet distinctly. Very few characters wear circlets, and the majority of characters that do are Jarls. So why has Bethesda chosen to give one to this KG Pilgrim? Well, for one thing, it marks her as important, and Kine is extremely important to the Elder Scrolls series, particularly Skyrim. And using gold instead of a lesser metal further signifies her importance. I mean, the gold emerald circlet is the most valuable one in the game. But there's further significance to the emeralds. Is green not the color of nature? If someone handed me a palette of colors and said which one represents nature, I'd certainly pick green. And Kine is the goddess of nature. Furthermore, the color green is commonly associated with Atmora, the continents that Ysgrimor and company came to Skyrim from in the Morephic era. And as you might know from playing Skyrim, Atmora and Atmorans have strong ties to Kine. Speaking of colors, we must acknowledge her sparkling blue eyes. Shrines and amulets of Kinnereth are both decorated by this lovely blue gem. And that's because Kinnereth slash Kine's domain is said to be the sky. And yes, that's why the Nords are sometimes referred to as Children of the Sky. So given Kine's tie to the sky, which assets relevant to her represent with the color blue, it's very fitting that the character artist that designed Karita incorporated the color blue. Also, I kept examining this amulet of Kinnera, thinking that the shape looks peculiar. Then it occurred to me, you know, it looks a lot like a map marker. And a light bulb went off when I was looking at Kine's sacred mountain on the world map. I aligned an amulet of Kinnereth with the throat of the world and ended up with a map marker that points nearly exactly to Karita. So Bethesda seems to have planned Karita very thoroughly, right down to her placement on the map. Additionally, we must acknowledge her voice. Karita is voiced by Martina Loten, who does a lot of the female Nordic voices. Her characters are known for having this very strong Nordic accent. So given Kine's ties to Nordic culture, if there were a character that was meant to be her, it would make a lot of sense to use this voice actor for her. Now let's talk about her motive. Why is Kine sending the Dragonborn these letters from a friend? 
Well, remember, she seems to have an interest in supporting Shezerin since they are remnants of her husband. And the last Dragonborn is more than likely a Shezerin. Also, Alduin is an ancient enemy of hers. So she wants the Dragonborn to become more powerful so that they can finish what the tongues her warriors started. In regards to her means to send the letters, Karita is capable of writing and sending them. And how does she know where to find the word walls? Well, my guess there is she can sense them like the Greybeards do. And why is she choosing to remain anonymous? The first thing that comes to mind is that she's being extra cautious because she's afraid that Alduin will find her. Also, she may be avoiding unwanted questions, perhaps about Lorcan or maybe her opinions about Skyrim's current civil war. And finally, she may be afraid that the Dragonborn might not believe her if she tells them that she is kind. According to some sources, most of the Aedra are not very powerful at this present time in Mundus, which, if true, may include Kine. So she may not have a way to prove to the Dragonborn that she is Kine. Lastly, we must acknowledge how fitting this theory is with the main questline and really this game as a whole. Given that the potential to receive letters from a friend is triggered by completing Dragon Rising, part of the main questline, and that they pertain to the Foom, which is heavily tied to the main quest and really is Skyrim's flagship mechanic, it's very likely that whoever sends these letters is someone that the player comes across during the main questline and is extremely important to Skyrim. And the only window of time that the player crosses paths with Karita and has an opportunity to speak with her is during the main questline. And this window of time begins at the very same point that it becomes possible to receive letters from a friend. The transition from Dragon Rising to the Way of the Voice. Furthermore, it's also extremely fitting that Kine is our anonymous sender. Think about how often you hear Kine's name when playing Skyrim. She's very deeply rooted in Nordic culture, especially in the lore that the main quest is built on. Hence, it's very fitting that she plays this hidden role in aiding the last Dragonborn from the Shadows. So folks, that's why I believe that Karita, who is actually the goddess Kine, is the character that sends the letters from a friend. Karita gives off this cagey persona, just like the sender of the letters. A number of things about her seem to hint that she is kind, such as her inventory, her location, and her name. She has the means and the motive to be the sender. And finally, it's extremely fitting on an artistic level since she's encountered during the main quest and is heavily tied to the lore surrounding the main quest. Given everything that we've discussed in this video, I'm very confident that this is the answer to this mystery. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. It all really helps me out. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.